Well, yeah, this is Jenna Smith with Corrupted Promotions, and you are tuned in to GFG TV. All right, kicking back into episode three, we were speaking about the Iowa Music Awards, and uh, I kindly interrupted you so that yeah. we could kick off to episode three. So I'll let Ray kick off with where he was, and then we can do. Okay, so we got the Iowa Music Awards. What city is that based out of? Who is behind that? And what did you win? Uh, that would be Tone to Boss, uh, Antonio Chalmers. He's amazing. When I say that his work ethic is unmatched, this is not an understatement. He yeah. does not sleep. He has worked hard for uh, years and years, but like for like he will say, ten years. You know, he's had this idea um, to do the Iowa Music Awards and just waited. He's just been waiting. You know, thinking that he wasn't the person to do it and that there should be someone else. Then he realized that he's that person. And as simple as that quote is to say, because that's what he says often, it, there's so much meaning behind that. Like, he deserves it. Like, he puts in the work and the hours, and he's got the ear. He pays attention to everything, you know. So, he, uh, yeah, owner of T1 Entertainment. Also, he does the Iowa Summer Jam. So, what other great person, you know, to start something up like that. He's got the Academy behind him, which is a panel of, you know, very knowledgeable um, people that know what's going on in the Iowa music scene that, you know, they do a lot of the voting and stuff too. So it's very fair and unbiased and professional. And I just really love that he, he started that. Um, as far as I know, he's even got a proclamation signed by the mayor that where it's an official day. Like the Iowa Music Awards is now an official day in Iowa on the Iowa calendar. So that's huge. That's but, yeah, that's so huge, huge yeah. Any recognition from this state or something along yeah, those lines? Yeah, I love that really. for us. Like, one of the ladies that won an award, I believe she won Female Singer. Um, maybe, I think. Uh, or Country Singer? I think she won Female Country Singer. Uh, she said that, you know, she's done a lot of shows in Tennessee and that every, you know, she's amazing. But, like, they always told her that she didn't have a seat at the table. And she said what she loves about Iowa is that we all give each other a seat at this table. You know, like, and so that's great that we have this award show to finally represent those people and, you know, how great our state is, you know, for music. It's not just, you know, Tennessee where you can find good country or, you know, New York or California where you can find good hip hop or, you know, it's like we have so much talent here. So I love that the Iowa Music Awards like highlights that. I think he's doing a dope thing for the music scene in general, not just hip hop, like, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Like, he wants to, yeah, he's including everybody. I mean, he even had the polka yeah. community involved. So he really wants everybody, you know, to be involved and to be seen and have their opportunities. So that's cool. I love that. So what were you nominated for and what did you win? I was nominated for a Promoter, Best Promoter. And, um, yeah, last year and this year. I that's won. awesome. Congratulations. Oh, thank you. I was expecting to win last year. Like I, um, I was, I was expecting that this year. I was not expecting that. I was really shocked when I found out I won. So that was really cool. Um, next year, I think I will probably withdraw. Even if I do do a bunch of shows this year, and I just decide to explode and start doing a bunch of events, I think I'm just gonna withdraw from it and give other promoters in, in our state a chance to be seen and known. Yeah. Because I still don't even know so many people that are throwing shows, you know, and I really want to see the nominees. I want to see who's going to submit, so. So you said you had a, you had your own street team. Uh, who were your street leads? Who were the leads of that? Yeah, I just, I took notes from Strange Music, so credit to Strange Music on that. I would have never even known about street teams without them. Okay. Um, I do know that they're not the first, because there's going to be people that are going to say Strange Music did not start street teams, and I know that. <laughs> But that's where I learned it, and um, I will say I will, I'm going to take notes. I took notes from them, and I just I selected the lead, trusted them to build a team, and so I was like, let's do shows in your area. You can be in charge of it, you know, like because they wanted to do something, but they didn't have a name. They didn't have I have an LLC for one, yeah. So they didn't have that, you know, that backing to do the show, or maybe they didn't want to. Maybe they didn't want that responsibility of you know of having a company, but they want to throw shows. So I found those people. And a lot of them were artists themselves, which helps. And uh, I chose them to be my leads. And they, um, I basically, I, I scheduled the show. It was my concept. I booked it. You know, I had the flyer made. I told the graphic guy, you know, let's do this for ideas. But the leads, they ran it. They put it all together. They made sure people got on stage. They made sure the DJ showed up. They made sure the flyers got out. You know, they did all the work. Even though, like, I can build it. And, yeah, that's 
a lot, but so is what they did, you know. And um, I threw a couple shows in Colorado, the one in Kansas City. Um, Daniel Aquino, he did amazing for Corrupted as my lead for Iowa, like, um, and the cities that I can't get to, you know, at, often. Like, he did well in Sioux City um, at the Marquee. He booked a few shows, and, like, um, I also had Casey Olsen. He booked some shows as a lead. Um, that's when we did the Jerry Robinson show. So, like, uh, that Power, pineapple dude. Yes. I yeah. said he's back on social media out of nowhere. So, I, yeah, I did message him, and I was like, you're back. And he's like, not really. He's like, I kind of just pop on. But, yeah, I guess he's been working, and, yeah, he's been just focused on like fell off the face of the earth. He did. I think he just wanted to focus on life, you know. Mm. People do that from time to time, I guess. Right. But, strange pineapple. <laughs> yeah, everybody said that's so funny because when I bring him up, everybody's like the pineapple dude. I'm like, yes. Yeah. So the pineapple dude. Oh, there we go. That's, that's but interesting. Yeah, all them, they did great. Paula, she, like I was saying earlier, um, she threw a show for, she did King Cash in Kansas City. And, you know, she just was like, what do I do? And I was like, what, well, you know, you've got, she actually, I didn't help with that at all. I, I'm pretty sure she booked all the openers. Um, she did the flyer, everything herself. Um, and then she asked me, she's like, well, what do I do with the money? And I was like, you, whatever. Like, <laughs> you, know, you, know, you cover the expenses, you pay your, whatever you want to do with it. Like, I didn't have anything to do with that and keep it, you know. So that was the other thing, too, is um, my leads, whatever they did for Corrupted, I had, if they did it, I couldn't take anything from that. Like, right. whatever you do with this, that's yours. You can right. have it. Thank you for putting the name out. You know, that's how the family grows. So That's dope. So uh, you're a promoter. You know what I'm saying? Obviously, being a promoter, you got to be tapped into the artist side. Of, who are some artists out here in Iowa that are grabbing your attention right now? Oh, uh, I do. I love Diggs. I think he's dope. Um, I love C Rob. I probably listen to C Rob like often. We, yeah, he's, we listen to him a lot. Um, That's my cousin, yo. <laughs> uh, I'm definitely gonna say GFG, but everybody's gonna already know that. Like yeah. I've been telling everybody that we've been. We've been a, a team since the beginning. Definitely. Um, so, uh, Naj, Naj is cool. Dynasty, I'm oh, always going to be a big fan of Dynasty. Like, if I could just put her up somewhere and be like, everybody watch just for a minute, yeah, I swear yeah. she would blow up. Shout out Dynasty. Um, those are my big ones right now in my rotation that I've, I've really been listening to. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so uh, let's go top five rappers of all time. Just... All genres. I mean, not all genres, but uh, not strictly strains, not strictly local, okay. just all around rappers. Mm. That's all right. interesting. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna have to go. Man, this is hard. It is. Honestly, it's just hard it choosing. Is. Um, Ludacris, I gotta, I gotta put him in Ludacris five. Ludacris rap, dog. Yeah, we're gonna go from Ludacris. He slept on, I feel like. I can't leave Luda off the list. I was thinking about it. I can't do it. Um, Jeezy. I love Jeezy. Yeah. Big Jeezy fan. Lil Wayne. I think Lil Wayne is like the go. Even though I'm gonna put I'm gonna put Lil Wayne at at number at number three. I think he's a go. I do. I don't think anybody can out rap him. I don't think anybody can out lyricist. I don't have nothing. Like, he is so amazing. Um, yeah. And then it was, it'd have to go probably Eminem and then NF. And I know yeah. people are going to be shook that Tech's not on that list. Like, they're going to be shook. And there's going to be a lot of controversy about that because I've gotten into it before. You heard it say Aaron? He, right. I'm, I mean, I gotta be honest. I can't put Tech on it just because they expect it. Tech's definitely on my top. He's, he's my six. Absolutely. Sure. He's, but I. I didn't grow up consistently listening to Tech Nine the way I did yeah. the other ones, and um, honestly, I didn't really super get into Tech Nine when I until I was stealing my brother's CDs when I was like freshman year. You know? So you said NF as number one. What do you like about NF? NF, I love that he doesn't have to cuss at all to get people's attention. I love that. I love his background, like just his his real life background, yeah. family history, and how he uses music as his therapy and not and not for anything else. Like, he could literally care less about fame or any of that. Like, uh, we relate a lot in that. I think that that's what got me so far in life was, like, when I was stressed or upset, it's like, I just go, 
I turn on my music. And when I found NF, it was like, this is what I've been waiting for. Yeah. Like, he, I don't know, he, he, it's, if I could sing, if I could rap, if I could be a rapper, I'd be NF. <laughs> like, that's how I feel. Like, that's how I would sound. That's what I would say. Good. You know, like, that's, I just resonate with him so well. I love him. I love him live. When I see him live, it's literally like, I feel like nobody else is in the arena. Like, nobody at all. Like, it's just me and him. I don't feel like that with other artists. You know, like, I just feel that connection with him. Um, what was the first concert you ever attended? First ever concert was Slipknot. So I love that for being from Iowa. That's, that's right. Where was that at? Tell us some about it. That was at the Hilton Coliseum, and it was a Shadows Fall, Lamb of God, um, opened up for them. That, I was 15 years old. I was a <laughs> man at the time. My, I was uh, staying with my Uncle Jason. He was letting me crash with him because he's younger. He's uh, <coughs> my mom's baby brother. So I was crashing with him. He got me a ticket, and we went, let's go. So it was cool. It was a cool experience. And it's like... My husband now was actually at the concert too. I didn't even know him then. So that's kind of cool. That was dope. Yeah. Shout out Justin. <laughs> <laughs> Top five movies of all time. Cool. That was going to be tough. Um, probably fried green tomatoes. You going down or up? Down. Okay. Least to favorite. Okay. Yeah. Uh, probably fried green tomatoes. Classic. Uh, The Princess Bride. Okay. Friday. Yeah. Cook it up. Eight Mile. There you go. Impractical Magic. Okay, look at you. Shit. You said Eight Mile. Uh, I'm gonna be dropping shit. I got a I got a song with Marv One coming out. So y'all be watching out for that. Oh, that's a no. Hell yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, what were some of the, what were your favorite childhood TV shows, would you say? So, like I said, I didn't go to school. Yeah, so you might have had a lot of time to watch TV. <laughs> so my mom is like, she she didn't work. Yeah. So she had control of the TV. So it was, oh, Jer- it was Jerry Springer. <laughs> I didn't even lie. It was Jerry Springer, Ricky Lake. So yeah, yeah. I feel like, yeah. I feel like yeah. Jerry. Jenny Jones. I feel like Jerry was on TV for like 85 okay. hours a day at one point. At all. Like, Sally Jesse. <laughs> it was like just the only thing on that channel for the longest time. Yeah. The talk show light up. You yeah. gotta love it. Then Ricky we gotta Lake. switch. It was Young and the Restless. You know, 90210. Yeah. Melrose Place. What you yes. know about Jenny Jones? Yeah, Jenny Jones. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, said that one. We had all of it. That's honest to God. That's what I grew up on. Yeah. And then uh, we had Nickelodeon too. Honestly, that's a, that is a great question too because um, my mom, like I said, she was infamous for just not getting out of bed. Yeah. So I literally raised myself from the time I can remember. When I was like three, I'd be crawling on the counters and stuff, you know, like getting food and stuff. Yeah. And uh, it was it was Nickelodeon that I would turn on every day, and it was Face. Remember face? Yeah, face. Burr, burr, burr. Yes. And, I mean, that dude kept me entertained all, all day, day long. Dude. All day with me and him. He was my babysitter. You and the like, Gullah Gullah Island. Gullah Gullah Island. Yuri, his castle. Dude, that Talk your shit. That was my shit. And, uh, you know, uh, Hidden We got to be similar in age because you should talk of that shit. Yeah, man. his Legends of the Hidden Temple. Are You Afraid of the Dark? Like, that was yeah. all my jam. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That is funny as hell. Yeah, I'll be 35 December 3rd. Okay, I'm 36. Yeah, see what Okay, yeah, it makes sense. Now Power I feel Rangers, like you're talking that shit. Yeah, Power Rangers was huge. I was a Pink Ranger for like three years in a row. Yeah. Yeah, straight up. I was just a little before that. I turned 40 this coming year. So yeah. I was a little ahead of that. Yeah, he was like, I don't know. What the fuck she talking about? I was more I was more on like the Rugrats John. Like I was oh, like, on like yeah, just yeah. a little just a little bit before. But Rugrats, same stuff, similar. Right. Yeah, I remember the temple, that was a dope show. Yeah. That was yeah. like they actually had like a game show for kids and shit. Like, that was mm-hmm. dope. Yeah. Yeah, like and the figured out. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So are you an animal lover at all? Absolutely. Like animals are before people to me, I ain't even gonna lie. Like I absolutely love animals. I've got uh, three dogs, seven cats, oh, eight shit. chickens. <laughs> I got animals. I just got rid of a raccoon a couple Holy years shit. ago. I mean, I've raised everything. So, I, I just love we're, them. We're, we're, we're not going to act like you didn't just say that. You say you just got rid of a raccoon. Yeah. So let's talk about that. I had Nico. So she, my, uh, my husband was working, found her in a barn, short story. 
she got your flown, fault. She got flown out of a cupola during a teardown. And I said, bring her to me now. And she just opened her eyes. I would manifest in this. Every night, I was like, raccoon, raccoon. Oh, wow. Uh, so, and I got her. And I said, bring her now. So uh, there, was, there was no other babies around, no mom or anything. So he brought her to me. I bottle fed her. I had her until she was almost six months old. Oh, wow. And, yeah. And I mean, she got to be full grown. But having a raccoon is like a baby, you know. So as a newborn, I had to be up every two hours. I had to set an alarm to feed her. And they have to be burped, just like babies. So that was rough. And they have to be stimulated to go potty after that. And like, so it was how I can't think of a newborn. And then, you know, they start to eat cereal and baby food like babies at like three months old. So then, you know, you're going to feed them and they've got thumbs. So they're ripping the spoon out of your hand and flinging baby food everywhere. <laughs> so, Cheryl, you didn't know this already. You had to research this, right? Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Whenever I get an animal, I, yeah, I do probably hours of research and scrolling. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And so what other animals did you have? You have three dogs, seven cats, and... And eight chickens. Eight chickens. Yeah. Okay. And I hatched a lot of them myself. I've got an yeah. incubator, so I just put eggs in and hatch them. I've got silkies and some barred rocks, Americanas, and Polish. Very nice, very nice. Are you much of a cooker at all? Love to cook. That's my biggest hobby, honestly. What's your specialty? What's your specialty dish? If we was all right here and we threw down and said, this is the money, go get your best dish, and you're going to cook for us for right here, what you making? I would have to do either my salmon or, honestly, my lasagna. My mm. lasagna is 10 pounds, mm. and I mean, it's four cheese, two meat lasagna, so I mean, it's, and there's so much flavor. Yeah. Yeah, so that's a big one that everyone loves, and then my salmon is just off the charts. You take a Viagra calm down, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he loves, he loves my food, but I love that. Okay, and then what, what goes into the salmon? Give us a little bit about the salmon. I mean, it's really just basic. Honestly, I wonder why more people don't. It's been, A lot of people just don't flavor their food. You right. know, it's it's all in seasonings. They're scared, and they're scared to over-season when it's almost impossible to do that with a lot of things. I hear you. Um, a lot of it, it's just butter. It's just a butter-lemon mix yeah. that is, you know, literally poured and soaked yep. into my yep. salmon. And then it's a lot of, like, probably 10 different seasonings of, like, some Sloppy Mama, Old Bay. How are we cooking it? Yeah, Greek. Yeah, yeah, I get it all in there. Yeah. I'm saying, how are we cooking that thing? How, we just bake it. Yeah. I just, yeah, I bake it. I don't like to fry it because I feel like yeah. it, it cooks. It cooks too fast. I like to just 12 minutes. You know, yeah. a nice thick slab. 12 minutes, perfect. I hear you. Yeah. So, what other hobbies are you into? Got any hobbies? Yeah, I like to. I love to paint. Um, I started a candied fruit business, so I'm making candy fruit. Yeah, talk about that. I've seen that. What's the name of that company? Yeah, that's Candy Crazy. Candy so, Crazy. yeah, it's literally just, I make the candy homemade. A lot of people ask me if I just melt Jolly Ranchers and stuff, but it's... Yeah, well, how the fuck do you do that? What yeah, is that? It's literally homemade. So, like, I make, I make it with sugar, corn syrup, uh, okay. water, all that, and I have to heat it and make it with a candy thermometer until nice. it gets to the hardening stage, and then I got to hurry and dip my fruit and then stick it in the freezer. So, the fruit is actually hard, like hard candy. Yeah, the fruit, well, the, the candy's hard, like hard candy, so it's like crunchy. That's what I'm saying, yeah, yeah, yep, yeah. and then you bite it, and the fruit's like, you know, mm. it's, all, people love it, yeah. All right, ask him, how's it, is that shit fire, though? It's fire. It's fire. It's What's fire. your favorite one? Um, honestly, the strawberries. I strawberries mean, are good. In, in anything, honestly. <laughs> okay, it's okay, fire. okay, I mean, we might check this one out. I mean, the strawberries are definitely delicious, um, but as far as eating, the, the grapes. Oh, they might. That sound they're, like they're, they're, just, they're just they're just perfect bite size. Yeah, you know, because usually the strawberries you get are like the size of baseballs, basically. But so when you dip it, it's just a lot of strawberry. So the meat. grape, you just bite it, or you got to work it before you bite it. You just bite it because it's just a thin coating. Okay. Yeah, it's real thin. It's not too hard. Right. Okay. That sounds good to feel. That sounds I mean, good to feel. You eat a whole tray of it. I mean, you have a diabetic, you know, episode. <laughs> You're going to have to talk to Wilford Brumley after right, that. Right. <laughs> okay, let's talk local eats. What's good to eat? What are your favorite restaurants? What are your favorite restaurants to eat at? Um, I'm a big sushi person, so I really like Samurai's. Uh, Samurai's? Yeah, here in Des Moines. Okay. Like for sushi, it's my favorite. Hibachi place and sushi place. Okay. Um, Local food, like in our, we live in a really small town, so we've just got like a little ice cream shop mm -hmm. and a chuck wagon. Speaking of which, we have a burger place. We, like I said, we live in a very, very, very small town in Adair, Iowa. Okay. Chuck wagon um, is our restaurant right on the interstate. Tech Nine came in 
like three weeks ago to eat. Is that not weird? Does anybody think that's weird? I do. That's Why, weird. Why right? Yeah. Everybody took their pictures with him and everything. And I'm like, what is he doing here? Why yeah. are you in a gear Iowa? That's why it's weird. weird, yeah. Like, where was I? Was he trying to get me up now when I go? Like, I have so many questions. Yeah. <laughs> when you what got money, you can do what you want. <laughs> yeah. You know what it's I mean? seriously like the smallest town in Iowa, though. Maybe show. that's like a well known burger, though. I mean, it is very, yeah, they've won Best Burger in Iowa. Like, I go to Jamaica, like, when they had that tenderloin up yeah. there that was, like, you totally. know, the best. That thing was fire. I went up there, and damn, Georgia. you got an OWI at the beach. Yeah. He tells me about that all the time when I'm in Jamaica, yeah. Dude, it's such a yeah, good, it's so good. Yeah, they're sour, they're sour, so they're sourdough tenderloin, and they're sourdough burger. It was so good that I started fire. drinking. I don't even drink. It's funny. Like, I was yeah. like, I was like, I gotta, I gotta have a drink behind this one. Oh, damn. I was like, I, I ended up getting drunk there and shit. Hanging out. <laughs> felt like I knew the people and shit, you know? <laughs> they just fed me good. That was it. I gotta have a drink. Yeah, I, I literally like, don't, man. Your house, you're really nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? This place is awesome. This place anyway. is awesome. What's on the cash, <laughs> cash. They don't have a card. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Speaking of local food, though, I was kind of uh, thinking about that. I was like, you know what? A podcast I would be really cool with, like, local food. Like, each time you do a podcast, like, all right, well, we've got food from here today. You know, yeah, yeah, fuck yeah. And you just test it out. Then you promote the business. Yeah. You know, I think that's a dope idea. I think it is. Yeah. I'll smoke a pound and do that every day. Yeah. You like, there's the, guy, there's the guy who does the hot wings, you know? Yeah, I, hell yeah. I was thinking that that's where it came from was. There's a... Uh, Brennan Schaub does food truck diaries. It's kind of similar. That's dope, man. Yeah. 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 So we need something for Des Moines, though. You know, yeah, do something. Yeah, Des Moines. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. Well, obviously Brennan Schaub ain't coming here. Yeah, you know yeah. yeah. sandwich yeah. shops, chicken places, yeah. anything. Even coffee. Like, you know, if you do a morning episode. I think there is somebody. I, I want to say there is somebody in Des Moines that's doing some doing it on a smaller scale and shit. Oh, I can't, okay. I can't remember I that fully. Exactly. name, though. I'd be interested to follow it. So. Yeah, there's yeah. a traveling podcast that I did uh, heard about. Sports at all? Are you into sports? Yeah, I love sports. Yeah, I grew up with just brothers, and my dad was raising me, like I said, for a little bit with like no moms. Yeah, you know, you know, so it was all sports. He's a big. He does fantasy football. Has my whole life. So I grew up. He's a Raiders fan, Hawkeye fan. I'm a Raiders fan, Hawkeye fan. Talk I just had to go after my dad. So, uh, but I love him. We go to Kinnick every year. And watch the Hawkeyes. We usually get end zone tickets or sideline tickets, so yeah. we're right there in the action. It's pretty cool. Yeah. You ever been to a Raiders game? No. So we were in Vegas, and um, I took a helicopter over the field, mm-hmm. and I was like, man, I just want to go in there. But it was during COVID, and at the time, there was only three NFL teams not allowing people mm-hmm. in that weren't vaxxed, and it was the Saints, the Titans, and the Raiders. So even though I was in Vegas and they were playing the Bears, which is his team, we didn't get a go. I was really bummed. And so I'm kind of hoping they change it so I can go in there. I went to a Raiders game in Vegas last year. Yes, you did. That's right. I was going to say, I know some people. You were one of them. Yeah. Yeah. That shit was dope. Hey. The black hole is different being in the black hole, dog. Hey, that's it is. Dope. I've heard, yeah, I've heard that stadium's amazing. Yeah, like, it is. It really I is. tailgated uh, Oakland Raiders game. Oh, you went to the OG. Yeah, OG, I was, and that's so cool I, too. Yeah. and the uh, we I did one for 49ers, too. And that's I'll tell you what, cool. it's it's different. Dude. Yeah, the Raiders ones, bro. If you're not a Raiders fan, it's a little bit intimidating, bro. Dude, it's different. <laughs> it's different. Nobody has fans like us. Nobody dresses up the way yeah. they do. No, like, bro. And, and, and it's bleeding. not just that. Like, it's not just that. All of those things, cool. I could deal with. It's the attitudes. <laughs> bro. Hey, it, they they, they could be O and ten on the season, <laughs> and they are going to talk hella shit. Yeah. <laughs> it does not matter. We are angry. Does not matter. Favorite Raiders player of all time? Max Crosby. Max Crosby. He's a fucking dog. He actually, I think he's a defensive player right now. Did you just see his recent after game interview where he hit the backwood on live TV on ESPN? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And the Raiders locked the roof. Yeah, he didn't give a fuck. Max Crosby well, makes no fun. After the game, I like him even more. After the game in the locker room, he's doing an interview and said, just to get the big fat ass backwood and sit during the interview. I knew uh, I liked him. I knew I liked him. Live TV and shit was great as fuck. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out Max Crosby. <laughs> Shout out to not being on the list anymore. No, I love him. He you get in the NBA him. at all? Um, I don't. My dad, like I said, he does. He does a lot of NBA stuff, but I don't. Um, Who's your dad's team? The Rockets. Rockets? Yeah, okay. He's a Rockets fan. 
That's dope. Uh, you got a favorite Hawkeye player of all time? I really like Campbell. I, I don't think anybody can beat that dude. I think he's yeah. like a legend. I hear just you. himself. I think that we were lucky to have him. Um, yeah, I like a lot of players that aren't really that popular. Like, I was a really big Christian Kirksey fan, and then he got drafted and mm -hmm. went to the Browns. Um, I was a really big Austin Kelly fan, but then he decided to go to law school and fully focus on that instead yeah. of quit. Like, so I'm, I'm fans of the players that aren't really the bigger players. But, I still don't. Um, but Campbell is, like, a, he's great. I love him. I can't wait to see what's going to happen with him. So these recent couple years, I want to say, you just got married? Was that yeah, accurate? This year. this year? Yeah, I got married in February in Hawaii. Okay, and who did you get married to? To Justin Stufflebean. Justin Stufflebean. Where did you get married at? Hawaii? Yeah, we got married in Oahu, Hawaii. Uh, we eloped. We yeah. Got, yeah, we got engaged in Vegas February 11th. And that night, I was like, we're eloping. I said, we, I don't, that night, I was like, we are not having a wedding. I don't want anything to do with it. Like, just because it would be his family and then my dogs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, I was like, we're not going. So yeah, we eloped and it was beautiful and it was just private and spiritual. Like everything awesome. is so spiritual in Hawaii. And uh, we spent a week out there together. Um, and then we came back and we did our reception with friends. And then um, we did a honeymoon fund at the reception and we made enough money to buy plane tickets to go to Puerto Rico. That's so now we're gonna go to Puerto Rico and celebrate our honeymoon in February again. So that's a dope. Congratulations on that. Thank you. Um, Nothing wrong with leaving Iowa in February. No, that's <laughs> I'll put that right there. Yes, yeah. just far enough in to be sick and fucking tired of this winter. For that's We're it. ready by that point, too. Yeah. yeah, that's a good time. Um, I do believe through everything, like, I learned a genuinely a lot about, you know, just just listening. Like, you are very thorough and, uh, it, like I said, well-spoken. It was a pleasure getting to know you. Thank you for sitting down with us. Um, I think these will be definitely a, a lump of knowledge for a lot of people around here to learn. And thank you. Yeah, thank you. It was, it's been fun. It's been cool. Got any shout outs? Um, yeah, I want to give honestly a huge shout out to just anybody that follows Corrupted. Any person that has been to any, even one show, stayed one minute, liked the page, uh, bought a t shirt. Followed the artists that I've pushed so hard, like, honestly, like, like, I, you know, it's so cliche to say, but I really wouldn't even, even have one award, you know, without anybody that believed in Corrupted as yeah. much as they did. Like, it took me by shock the whole time, but they kept believing. Yeah. So the people, um, all the artists that I've worked with that also have, have believed in me to, to stand up for them and to be a, kind of a voice for them at times and a picture for them that believed in that, so... Um, that's a lot, but big, big shout outs to GFG for sure, Scar the Monster, Race Coakley, KG Boog, uh, Jay Breed, you know, the immediate fam. Yeah. Well, gotta give big shout outs to them. We've done a lot together. Let me ask you one more thing before we get out of here. If there's a, say there's a young lady out here right now and she's looking to get into the promotion game, what advice would you give a young lady right now? Don't be scared. Um, don't be intimidated by the men in it. Don't be intimidated by the people who are going to tell you that because you're a woman, you know, that's what was slammed into me was, oh yeah, you sure work for Tech Nine. I was mocked a lot. A lot of people thought I was a liar when I told them that I was, you know, the lead of a street team. Don't let those people get to you because literally in one moment, you know, you can let all that crush every single bit of what you've worked for. And use that as fuel and uh, that's what I did um, so I say take any doubts and use it as fuel and then just go hard and prove them wrong that's my biggest piece of advice is you can do it and um, don't question yourself like don't think well what if just do it call a venue they're going to answer if you have a question they'll answer it you know what I mean don't be scared well we appreciate you telling a bit of your story with us today on GFG TV yeah appreciate it thank you for your time